and welcome to Court Games, a podcast for the Legend of the Five Rings community, funded by the Legend of the Five Rings Discord Patreon. This podcast focuses on the RPG's stories and lore for Legend of the Five Rings. I'm Korva. And I'm Kikita Kaori. And we are here to bring you the news today, our news, which is a roll-up of something that they've been slowly pushing out information on over the last few weeks, is about the new RPG book called Shadowlands, The Essential Guide to the Dominion of Fu Lang. It's a 144-page hardcover book, and it's currently on the boat, and it's due out March 21st from FFG Publishing. Pre-order that from the FFG site, or you can get it from your friendly local game shop, which, quite frankly, I always recommend because they should they need supporting. But you do get some nice pre-order bits and bobs from the FFG site, so you may have to have a think about that. At least if you want beautiful pictures of Oni. Mm. I'm I'm not sure those two words those words go together, like beautiful picture and Oni. <laughs> but I guess I guess it depends. It depends on the individual. <laughs> uh, this looks to have a whole heap of awesome things if you're into the Shadowlands. We're going to be getting a map of the Shadowlands territories and also, I believe, the Crab territories with yes. all sorts of new locations, like what are we seeing? The Fallen Chrysanthemum Lake, False Lantern Grove. The False Lantern Grove sounds cool, yes. It has, uh, <laughs> it has uh, by day, it is full of beautiful blossoming trees and by night, it is filled with the bodies of the withered and dead, rotting with taint, with lanterns in the skulls, so not a place you want to hang out no, no, not really. But then again, the Shadowlands is sort of like that all over the place, yes. This this is what the Shadowlands has instead of ro- a romantic night spot, I guess. <laughs> and you may possibly be able to find the Tomb of Fu Leng, where nobody lies and those scouts who have entered it have never returned. There is a map of Crablands and the Caillou Wall. Um, one thing that has stirred up some discussion uh, on the various lists is the fact that the Barracks of the Damned is a whole lot closer to the rest of Rokugan than the Wall is. Oh. One wonders what they were trying to do or use their uh, damned for when they keep them back in there, but we'll yeah, find who, out. <laughs> who precisely are they aimed at? <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that is a question. That's something you want headed towards you. However, it has goodies for people who are even not Shadowlands or Crab. There are new schools. It looks like there might indeed be one new school per great clan. And each, we would imagine, have something to do with Shadowlands hunting, some interaction for mm. the Shadowlands. The example that they gave were the Moto Vindicators, which were Moto Shiginja trained to hunt the undead, including, in particular, those Moto that were lost to the Shadowlands. If you remember, yes. the Moto went on a large expedition under Moto Sume to go take care of the problem, because obviously the crab were doing it and it did yeah. not go well yeah this is this is way back when the unicorn first returned to rocky Land, and they're all we're awesome at everything and and no one likes us so we're gonna prove how awesome we are and we're gonna beat up the shadowlands because we can do that because the crab are terrible and oh it went wrong it went so very very wrong Yes. Now, it's that school works by draining or nourishing the energy in others. So uh, the, I think this might end up being a sort of version of the Moto Death Priest, which would be very interesting. Possibly, yeah. We're, we're kind of guessing that there might be some others, but if there are new schools for each great clan, probably you're getting the Phoenix Inquisitor, the Asako Inquisitors, looks to be a good possibility. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got the Scorpion Kudoiban, who've always been very, very anti-Shadowlands. And they've been the, the, the Scorpion sneaky Shadowlands finding outing and stabbing people. The, the kind of people who kind of deal with the Shadowlands threat in Rokugan before anyone else realizes it was even there. Yes. But uh, even the Crane have their, the Daidoji Iron Warriors, who are quite famous for being probably the largest non-crab force on the wall. Yes, the uh, Daidoji need to pick up their enduring tactics to hold out with smaller Mm. forces against the lion, and so they train with the crab. They also expand, of course, and develop the crab clan families, the Hida, Kayu, Kuni, Haruma, and Yusuki, with history and NPCs and artifacts and story hooks associated with each family. Yep. I think this book would be a must-have, really, for 
dedicated crab players. Absolutely. But of course, you also get the, the things that the crab are fighting against. So there's going to be new Mahu spells and techniques. In the core book, you didn't get that many Mahu spells. Yes. But I suspect that was largely because they were saving them up for exactly this thing. This, mm-hmm. this supplement to come out, so uh, that's going to be fun if you want. If you're a GM looking for unpleasant things to throw at your players, right? Even in a court campaign, I would say this was a must buy for GMs, just because Maho can show up in any kind of campaign and is good for giving your antagonist that little bit extra. Absolutely. Uh, what else are we going to be getting? We've got new advantages and disadvantages, which will be related to the Shadowlands. Uh, Light Sleeper, which sounds like a really good one to have. I could see it being reversed, though, as well. You know, true, like you true. aren't able to sleep in a disturbing situation as well. Yeah. Like you're trying to sleep while waiting for a battle to begin. That that could be a problem. Yeah, but but if you're in the in the in the Shadowlands, I don't I don't think you want to be too too relaxed. No, you don't no. want to sleep too well. Sleeping like a baby, not good. No. Uh, and I uh, the, uh, the love this one, Lost Name. Yes, it actually gives us what, what that means. It, an Oni knows everything that you're seeing and thinking and can see through your eyes. So we've learned about losing your name in lore many times throughout old 5R, and now we get to see what that actually means to you if your character loses their name. Uh, and it's not an automatic GM takes over your character, so it can be uh, quite a challenge as someone you play with. That's that does sound really really cool, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, how that turns up in play and how that feels when you when you kind of get that. Uh, we're also going to be getting artifacts, weapons, armor, uh, rule, rules for templating such items. So that's going to be interesting. I think possibly the Caillou with their crafting is going to be they're going to want they're going to want that stuff. Oh, I've got to have my Caillou armor. If I'm going to if I'm going to max out my character, I want to have the best armor. Um, and we get the Falcon Miner Clan. So each of these books and we'll talk a little bit more in Courts of Stone. There's a mm. new one coming out. Looks like they're going to be an area of effect uh, of uh, Rokugan it's studying this one is the Shadowlands, and then we focus also on a great clan that interacts the most with that. This one is the Crab. Then it brings us a minor clan, and the Falcon Minor Clan, in old Five R lore, was absorbed into the Crab Clan. That was due to a tournament victory, mm. uh, but at this point in the storyline, in both old Five R and in new Five R, it's an independent minor clan. Uh, yep. Of spirit hunters fighting ghosts. Uh, ghosts are not Shadowlands creatures, though they can become corrupted, but they are those of the dead who have either escaped one of the realms of the dead or never managed to make it there. Detachment is a important principle in Japanese folklore, and Rokugan mm. carries it over. And if you don't properly get yourself detached from Ningendo, you can end up wandering around Ningendo as a ghost. Yep. And uh, someone has to clean those up. And who are you going to call the Falcon Minor Clan? Right. <laughs> the interesting thing is that an important aspect of this, of their what their job is, isn't just going there and like smacking things with magic weapons. It's having to explain to dead people that they're dead. <laughs> That's actually a part of the important thing is like some some ghosts literally do not understand that they are ghosts and you need to kind of go, you're you're dead. I'm really sorry about this, but you're dead. And that is part of getting them, you know, to move on, which I think is really cool because that you've got areas there for, you know, not just the obvious ones like the the warriors and the Shikenja, but literally there's a job for uh, Falcon Clan courtiers right like explaining to dead people no you you need to understand the the situation you're in mate (laughs) yes so there are different kinds of ghosts and i'm sure Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that to a degree there's you know the hungry ghosts which are gaki and vengeful ghosts which are goryo so many many kinds of ghosts and the falcon could see these dead people and help them on their way but uh i think the biggest part for gm's in the Shadowlands book will be the guide for running games of horror and corruption and Oni and Mm. Shadowlands Tain, all of those 
things that you can then integrate into your campaign. And uh, in our discussion part, we'll, we'll talk about horror games. Mm -hmm. Being sold at the same time is a different product, which is the Mask of the Oni. And that's also by FFG. You can get that from their site and also from your friendly local game shop. I think it's coming out at the same time. I think so. It's on the same boat, I think, <laughs> uh, March 21st. And that's coming down. That's that's saying we've got a, a an adventure booklet, 50 tokens for NPCs. That's going to be very similar to the beginner box. Yes. And a double-sided fold-out map of the Shadowlands on one side and the ruins of Daylight Castle, which was the Hiruma Castle that was lost in the attack of the Moor way mm -hmm. back when. That's when the Hiruma lands were lost and the Caillou Wall had to be built because otherwise all of Rock Gan was going to be overrun. It looks like you can go back there and see what's going on and probably be very frightened and run away from <laughs> things, from the sounds of things. That map looks beautiful. And it can be run after Dark Tides, which is the adventure in the GM's kit. And I think they're hunting a blood speaker who runs away to Daylight Castle. And there's some ancient secret. Yes, apparently something that, a secret that may uh, help or possibly completely ruin the Hiruma family. And I'm kind of interested to find out what that is. I do like that you can use them as part of an ongoing campaign, but also that you don't have to if you don't want to. I think that's a, a, a good strategy for them to be taking. Yeah, I think that Mask of the Oni is only for the GMs, and only if you plan on buying it, it's not as must-buy as the Shadowlands mm. book. More pogs are nice. <laughs> mm. We always like those pogs. So have you have you ever run a horror game? Uh, I have. I've I've run some Call of Cthulhu, which is a dedicated horror game. I don't know how good I was because I'm I'm not very good at keeping a serious tone like you're kind of meant to do <laughs> with a horror game. Uh, but yes, I have played some horror games in my time. We run them every Halloween. Ah, that's appropriate. Yes, as our, as our Halloween thing to do, we try and run something. In L5R, we have a long tradition of horror games dating back right from the beginning. Uh, there are some really terrifying old modules, official oh, yes. and unofficial, and some of, the most uno some of the unofficial ones have a reputation of being so bad that uh, they never <laughs> dared publish them, even though they were meant to be official at one point or another. Yes, yes. There's a number of horror books from first edition in particular uh, that has some good stuff to be brought into a fifth edition game, even though the rules are different. If I was going to pick one of the old L5R RPG books that you would want to tap for more monsters, because there's always more monsters, or to read lore or just get the vibe for um, horror gaming in L5R, yeah. I would go with Bearers of Jade. Um, that is just a super book full of stories, very light on rules but it really gives you the vibe for Rokugani horror. I think you can get that on drive through RPG, actually. I think you can, get, you can certainly get a lot of first aid stuff on drive through RPG these days. But yeah, yeah I mean, th those first, the uh, Where the Shadowlands, Bears of Jade, are both really, really good. Yes. But Bears of Jade, yeah. There's a lot of different kinds of horror RPGs, and L5R horror can fit in a lot of these different ones. So... yeah. Shadowlands in general, for me, fits in the category of a survival horror because it's a very difficult environment. Everything else out to get you in the Shadowlands. The, the mm. shadows are wrong. The light is dim. Everything is poison. The plants are out to kill you. Uh, just everything is difficult to survive. And it's more than enough for a challenge for your PCs to take a short stroll through the Shadowlands and return. You don't need a lot yeah. more. To <laughs> just being there, even if you don't interact with anything, just being beyond the wall is dangerous and will gradually turn you into a monster if you're not careful. So you've got to, even just being outside the wall, you've got to be very careful to ration all your stuff because you can't live off the land. You've got to keep your jade handy, make sure that's not going corrupt too quickly. You know, even your water 
has to be rationed because you can't drink any water that you find, even rain you can't drink, just just being outside the wall. And you cannot trust anything that you see. Like, right. the landscape will change. The trees could kill you. The grass could kill you. Uh, it's just, oh, it's really, really... Uh, the survival horror is absolutely perfect for being beyond the wall. That is definitely right. Now, when you want to build it up, a different mm-hmm. kind of horror game is the action horror game. This might be lighter on the horror aspect of it, but it's big on action and combat. And this works well for a Shadowlands moment inside mm. the Empire, where you are in the village at night and it's being attacked by an Oni. It can work to lighthearted, and that's not a bad thing. Mm. You've got to sometimes lighten up anyway, and, and a lot of games, you know, players love that kind of action. So um, that action horror is is also something cool to integrate into your campaigns in a different place. And if you think about it, an adventure on the wall, that's much more likely to be action horror. Because yes. that's when the waves of zombies and goblins and stuff are coming, and you've got to fend them off. And if you don't, then they get through and can get into rock again proper. And that can be very, very tense. But survival horror is kind of like the movie Alien. Uh-huh. And action horror is more like Aliens, <laughs> where you may you may have the big toys, and you may have the big guns, but you are still at risk. And the monsters are very, very scary. But it's more of an action thing than a, than a creepy horror thing. Yes. Another kind of horror that you can get and the Shadowlands can bring up is the existential or the cosmic horror. Yes. Stuff that is just so completely overwhelming and difficult to overcome that it almost doesn't even operate at a human scale anymore. This is back to Call of Cthulhu, where there are monsters in there, or things anyway, that they're not even monsters because you can't fight them. You will not be able to deal with them. All you can really do is stop them happening in the first place by stopping the people trying to summon it or stopping the circumstances being right for that thing to manifest. I mean, if things like the first Oni, that's not really a thing that most characters would be able to fight in any real sense. And even the festering pit itself, that's the existence of Jigoku. Can you really fight that? Is that really a thing that your characters can fight? Or is that just kind of just a horrible cosmic force that is just going to be there and doesn't really care if you live or die and isn't real is possibly even beyond good and evil and does good good and evil even apply that kind of thing? That can be a kind of a fun space to explore. There is a notorious module where a shooting Joji is summoned mm. at the end of the module. And I don't want to give it away because it doesn't start out there. Oh, no. <laughs> by saying what it is. But uh, that, that is absolutely that. You you barely survive. It takes uh, intervention of the Imperial Legions and mm. the entire Dragon Clan army, I believe, to get anywhere against that. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> that really, really is. Another aspect that comes up a lot in the Shadowlands, especially with the Shadowlands taint, is you start getting into body horror. The human body starts to be transformed and changed and taken away, replaced, and and you start getting into questions of identity and who are you and what are you and and what do you become if if everything about you changes. I mean, you've got things, even not the Shadowlands taint itself on an individual, but you've even got the creatures like bog hags Mm -hmm. who can take someone's skin and become someone else which leads into all sorts of worrying questions about identity and and things like that. But if you are infected with the Shadowlands taint, your body can change in all sorts of unpleasant and horrible ways, which can make you very powerful, but they also isolate you from humanity. Yes, the body horror trope is, is a good one to include in a campaign which has very, very little Shadowlands, because Mm. then you are hiding your secret. Um, it, it's yes. something you you know you will be exiled, you will be removed, you will be killed, you will be forced to commit seppuku if anyone finds out you have managed, possibly through no fault of your own, to um, mm-hmm. acquire the Shadowlands taint, and uh, 
it's not reversible, at least nope. so far. And it tends to be progressive, and you get to hide this terrible secret. So it is mm -hmm. a good horror subplot for one of your characters in a non-Shadowlands campaign. It is, yeah. But the most Japanese-esque of horror stories is personal horror, which is horror that is directly and personally tied into the stories of the characters involved. It's in their immediate family. It's in their family background. It's in the person they love, people around them. That trope of it being so intimate is in the heart of a lot of Japanese horror movies and stories, folklore, uh, very deep connections. <sighs> I have to say, I have not seen much in the way of Japanese horror. I've not seen, like, The Ring or any of the other very famous ones, which uh, maybe I ought to. There is one I know that the husband goes away to war and leaves his young wife and his mother behind. And then when he returns, his young wife and mother are uh, raped and killed by uh, soldiers. Mm -hmm. And their spirits then come back and start tempting uh, all these soldiers who come through and killing them in revenge for the way that they were slain. And eventually he comes back from the war and finds it there. And that bringing it around to the incredibly personal is, uh, is like at the heart of the Japanese horror. Oh, that sounds really, really interesting and something that could possibly be brought up in a campaign. Especially, I mean, 5th edition does an awful lot with making your characters have those backgrounds and have those connections. With your, and also with your Ning, uh, Ningo and Giddy, kind of really, really making those ties, which I think could be very, very interesting. Um, I think there's an aspect when it comes to the Shadowlands and Legend of the Five Rings, where um, there's a question of how how much do you integrate that into your campaign? Because Rock Again has an awful lot of different possible campaign styles. You know, it's magical samurai in a magical samurai land. Mm -hmm. How much horror do you want at your table? Yeah, it's something you want your players to buy into. You you want to make sure Absolutely. that they uh, signed up for it, especially things like tainting their characters. Um, mm. Or if it's too deadly. Um, people put a lot of heart and soul into any characters they make, uh, and they have to agree that this is going to be an expendable character mm. if you want it to be that easy to kill you off. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, also, if a character gets tainted, then very often that completely derails whatever plans that player had for that character, because the taint actually becomes kind of the, the, the single most important driving force of that character's story now. And it's very hard to have someone say, well, my, my plan was to fall in love and marry someone, and, but, but oh no, the tragedy and... and you know, because I, because we can't, because but uh, we want to, but we mustn't, and now I can't do any of that because I've got this this Shadowlands taint, and that can derail a character. So you've got to be quite cautious about what you do to a character. Certain players have certain things that they can't cope with, or they have a hard time with. Uh, we never know everybody else's story, and horror does bring up people's individual lives and their own fears or their own background. An example that I learned when you're doing body horror, what we talked about with the Shadowlands tape, it is a very bad idea with a person who has been a victim of abuse. Oh, yeah. But other things like that, some people get too tense at a high tension yep. table and turn it into a negative play experience. So you just need to make sure you talk about the different kinds of horror and find out what works for your table yes what 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 can people cope with what can't they cope with you want a, you want a good session zero so uh, especially if you're saying oh, this is going to be a shadowlands campaign or this is going to be a shadowland heavy campaign and it's also a good idea to do that kind of thing in general just in case because even if you never do any horror elements at all you can still tread on people without meaning to if you don't at least have some kind of discussion ahead of time and I would also suggest if you're in a more standard Rock Again campaign, and now we're heading to Crablands, then let's just have a little <laughs> chat about what we're going to find down there 
and what you'd be okay with finding and what you wouldn't be okay with finding. Because your Shadowlands campaign, even though it is technically connected to the rest of Rockigan, it's a very different animal, I find. I think that's something you need to be aware of. And so, you know, be be mindful of your other players, be mindful of your own things. Be careful not to make this a negative experience for people, because it can be an awful lot of fun and make some really good, intense role-playing. But you don't want to hurt anyone along the way. You know, it's something to keep in mind. Players, it's okay to ask for a break when the tension gets too bad. Yeah. But some people turn it into a joke when they get tense. And that's that does tend to bring it down for the other players. But, you know, go ahead and, and take a break. And remember that the goal is to tell a good story. So that's always the goal in an RPG yep. is to work with your team and don't get so paranoid you don't act. Go mm. ahead and throw yourself in making the decisions you yep. need to make, even if they'll likely be wrong because it's a horror game. Let, let's split up and... <laughs> Let's, let's spin up and I'll look in the basement and all that kind of stuff. There's an interesting question I, I think I haven't seen much discussion of when it comes to in- integrating uh, horror into the Shadowlands specifically, into Rockigan, is how compatible do you want your Shadowlands to be with core Rockigan? Because Rockigan has been chugging along reasonably nicely for a thousand years or so, according to the law. There have been ups and downs, but there haven't been massive Shadowlands invasions. And there are some versions of the Shadowlands where you do look at it and you go, why hasn't this just taken over? How, how, how could anyone have stopped this? Right. And I, th- I think that's a dial you can tweak. Because if you start off in, like, in a lovely court game in Cranelands and then you go to Crablands and you're only going to spend a little t- time in Crablands to go, this is what Crablands is like, and then you go someplace else. You probably don't want the apocalyptic, we're all going to die Shadowlands for that. But if you're going to be playing a Shadowlands campaign, and that's the whole point, then I think be a bit more kind of out there with your Shadowlands and how dead, deadly dangerous it is. There's a lot of ways you can integrate those horror elements into a campaign. You can always do the one-off with your expendable pre-generated PCs to, to set it, and, and that's our good uh, Halloween one-shot. You can integrate it in by adding Mahosukai somewhere in main Rokugan. And then as your players figure out who the Mahosukai is and start closing in, the Mahosukai can start bringing Shadowlands elements and wrap them around himself to protect him from that. And so now everybody has to deal with the uh, Shadowlands aspect yep. of, of the Mahosukai's agenda. Um, a Gaki or Yurei can also um, warp the environment around them. So the the Gaki or Yuri, the ghost, might not be themselves incredibly evil, but if you have a powerful one, they can set up a very frightening environment around them that's not tainted. And then the problem's not killing the ghost, unless you're Falcon, but uh, solve the problem about what's the mystery of the ghost. So it could be really, really creepy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can run horror as mysteries so you've got the you've got the 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 mahutsukai and weird things are happening what's going on and you have to work out what's happening and how's it happening and who's behind it and then you find their lair and then you know big action scene you can have the gaki or the yude and what yeah again what's happening what's causing it and wait wait a minute this story about this person who had this really bad time of things and Oh, it's a ghost, and then you have to find the ghost and convince them that they're dead and that they should move on. <laughs> you could have um, – it's none of those things. It could be like a weak Oni that's taken over someone's name. They're trying to make things worse and worse so they get more power. Can you find that person? Can you free them from the Oni's influence before the Oni gets so powerful that it's – breaks free and becomes an only lord and because they're bad news and no one likes them i think so making that kind of thing as a mystery as much as horror could also be an interesting way of uh, integrating and i think also we need to remember that there is non-shadowlands horror out there in rock again i mean you got the shinamen mori has got some very frightening things in it 
that have nothing to do with the Shadowlands. And Rokugan is as tense and uh, subject to evil world, even in the not monster having part mm-hmm. as our real world. And there are people who are able to be their own horror show all by themselves. That is entirely true. So you can have your entirely human villain operating yeah. uh, in in a uh, non-Shadowlands campaign. But this idea of bringing in uh, these fearful elements, bringing in uh, the the strange environment, bringing in the personal threats, that's all possible in court. Yeah. And maybe that's the most horrifying of all. That Yes, it turns out we were the monsters all along. Uh, I think that's going to be us for this week. When it gets closer to actually not being on a boat, but actually being in shops where you can get your hands on it, we may revisit this, because I think there's a lot of stuff we can we can talk about in terms of Shadowlands and horror and rock again. And making your players as scared as possible. <laughs> But for now, uh, I think that's it for us. Uh, May the fortunes favor you. And uh, until we meet again, keep your jade handy.